This is Ned's NRL Unpopular Opinions with Gerald Yao Yi, Oscar Panifex, Liam Fogarty, and Ryan Cook. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ned's NRL Unpopular Opinions. I am your host, Ryan Cook. Fellas, we're down another man this week. We're only at round eight. But already Foggs has called stumps and taken off on a vacation. <laughs> Three days off now by my count on this show. Three? So we might require... A Must do- be nice. We might require a doctor's certificate going for I you. think you have to. I mean, this is my third year. You never, haven't missed a show? Never missed a show. Gosh. Never missed a show. I know. Our, um, how the other half live, eh? I don't know. Good for me. I don't know. know. I just... Look, it's consistent. It's what, it's what I try yeah. to pride myself on. The man. Iron Man, Gerald Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, on the flip side, the finest mind the game of rugby oh. league has ever seen is back, fresh from his honeymoon. <laughs> I'm not sure if we call it fresh. <laughs> yeah, he's not fresh. Not big, fresh, not fine. A big congrats to Oscar Panifex for tying the knot over the last week or so. Thank you, mate. Uh, you might be shocked to learn, mate, that 95% of our listener base is female. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> that is shocking. <laughs> Ladies, he's off the market. He's back on the show. Oscar, how you going, mate? Yeah, good. Uh, thankful to be back. You just referred to Gerald as the Iron Man of the podcast. Well, I've got the iron lungs of the podcast <laughs> after uh, living on the barley cigarette diet for the last uh, seven days. But yes, happy to be oh here. Gosh. Keen to talk some footy. Boys. Iron belly as well. Here you Matt, yeah, no, let's just stick with the lungs. I okay. Think. <laughs> uh, and still the undefeated coach of the West Arana Panthers, Tessie News, biggest enthusiast. Ooh. <laughs> it's Gerald Yao Yi. Yeah, it's good to uh, get the round one away, win away, boys. Um, started off 30% completion in the first half and still was up 10-4. Oh, wait. Defensively, we're pretty sound. Mm. Like, I'll say that. That's something that, we're, you know, we've worked on a lot um, at Arana. We wanted to be pretty good defensively this year. We know that defence wins competitions. So, kept them to eight. Should have kept them to four, but we were dropping like flies mm. over the weekend. We had Hoffy go down, hit a knee clash in the first five minutes. Ooh, no Didn't good. carry it back on the bench. So that's a learning curve from the coach. <laughs> um, and not only that, we had two boys go off with um, stitches, one with nine. The other- Nine stitches. Nine stitches Holy and dog. possibly won't play this weekend. Concussion to another bloke who probably won't play this weekend as well. So um, we're calling in the cavalry. We've got I've signed a few actually today, <laughs> a few <laughs> more people today <laughs> to, uh, to get the cavalry in. So we'll be right. Round two, Sanford Stags against the Sanford Stags at West Arana. It is, this this game is uh, the local derby. It's going to be big. A bit of um, a bit of his hus hus in the first little trial that we had against them. So looking forward to seeing what the crowd's going to be like on Saturday with no rain, hopefully, um, a dry track and um, some really good footy. Sammy Thiday back this week? Sammy Thiday is oh. back against his old club this hey. week because he, uh, he played at the Stags last year, took them all, to a gra- all the way to a grand final. They okay. lost that. But, um, yeah, he'll be back this week. Uh Packing in the in the middle um, with big Corbin Sims, putting bums in seats. No, well, well hopefully yeah. um, wherever you are listening from, get down to Arana on Saturday. Shout out! All right, speaking of injuries, there, Gerald, uh, we got to get into some Caleb yeah, Ponga and uh, Newcastle Knights oh. chat. Um, I'm sure the listeners probably already know, but Ponga is out for 12 weeks with a Linz Frank injury. Mm. Plenty of chat about uh, Newcastle's duty of care and his, the management of him last week. Mm. Uh, so, boys, we'll quickly talk about Ponga in general here. Mm. Um, what do you make of Adam O'Brien's, to first of all, decision to play him? Yeah, I mean, look, it's all not. All, I think we've got to understand it's not always just up to the coaches. Mm. You know, there's a whole, you know, group of people there who are making the right decisions, including physios, doctors, Kalen himself. So, you know, at the end of the day, the last word is Kalen's word. So, you know, as much as, you know, we can go out and, you know, throw a wedge between the coaching staff, everyone else, I would think that he's mature enough to understand that he should he be playing and should he not be playing. Mm. Um, look, you don't win comps in this early in the season. Mm. They, it does help to get off to a great start, but look what happens now. He's got 12 weeks off. He not only misses um, you know, great footy for other nights, but he'll miss another Origin series, yep. Uh, yep. which is two years gone for Kalen Ponga not to play in another Queensland jersey, which I think is absolutely ludicrous. Um which the fact that, you know, he is a guy that should be playing in not only Origin jerseys but Australian sides as well. So um, it's disappointing. Uh, it's disappointing to be a Knights fan if you are, but also a Queenslander. Um, you know, you're taken away from um, a lot of his footy that for years to come. Yeah. The Linz Frank injury, we're not doctors on this show, obviously, but that's sort of the kind of injury that some players would try and play through, I'd imagine. Jerome, yeah. Hughes, Jerome Hughes did the same mm-hmm. thing uh, recently. So... I guess is Adam O'Brien to blame here or are you guys of the opinion that Ponga is 
in charge of himself and he makes that decision. Yeah, well, Gerald would know better than, than either of us about how those kind of situations work. I think uh, it was the hip pointer that he carried into that game and he mm. obviously felt that it was a pain management issue that he could get through. Yep. And then maybe... Um, you know, because of that hip pointer injury, was he moving differently on the foot? Was it just was a coincidence that he cops a, another injury in that week? I think I'd be more concerned as a Knights fan, um, not about whether or not Adam O'Brien chose to play Kalen, but the way that the Knights played last yep. week against a Bulldog side that mm. had one prop on the bench who then lost another prop in the first two minutes of that game, carrying three small bodies on the bench for 75 minutes. Yep. All Newcastle needed to do in that game was four hit-ups to a kick, and by the 60th minute, the fatigue in the Bulldogs would have allowed Newcastle to run home, whether or not Callum Pong was on the field in the second half or not. And instead, I think New uh, Newcastle finished up 73% completions. They were pushing the ball around a lot. like They conceded a couple of early points, which... To me, it looked like there was just a bit of panic. Um, you're, chasing, of, you're chasing. They were chasing points, yeah. but they didn't need to chase them. No, like, no. All they needed to do, like I said, was complete their sets, and fatigue would have done the job for them. So, like, that, <laughs> I texted to the boys, it might have been a little bit of barley come down for me as well, but <laughs> that was the first game of footy I turned off in the the first time in four years that I've turned off a game of football. Says a lot watching, for you. Yeah. Because it was frustrating to see Newcastle beat themselves in that yeah. game. Like, credit to the Bulldogs. They're improving. Um, you know, I think there's some there's some better balance and some more repeatable actions in their attack. So full credit to Canterbury as well. But, yeah, the Newcastle Knights lost that one last week. Yeah. You, you talk about frustration. The fans are frustrated with the, the chopping and changing through the halves. Yeah, great they're, point. They're, they're looking for some reliability through the middle of the ground. What... Yep. What are we going to see from Newcastle now? First of all, who comes in to play fullback? Mm. And do you think Adam O'Brien finally says, hey, we need to have a stable ground here with yeah, the team well, list? Yeah, well, it, that was one of the arguments going into this game for me. I tipped the Knights, um, was that their spine was far, more <laughs> yeah, was far more familiar. They've spent more, I think, Gerald, you even said it, they've spent more time on the park together. Yep. Late change, um, uh, Cogger, Cogger is pulled out, Hastings and Gambler into the halves. And they just looked clueless, really. Um, I thought Jaden Braley had some really nice touches in the last two weeks, but um, yeah, those combinations weren't there. My immediate thought when KP was ruled out was that Will Price would come in and play fullback for the Knights. He's a young, I think he's an English boy. Um, he's still very young. I think he's playing six at the moment in New South Wales Cup, but he spent a bit of time uh, at fullback in the trials, and he looks very, 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 very smooth. Uh, capable. Capable. Yeah. Yeah. Big, yeah. tall body, rangy, he's quick, quick across the ground. He's got some ball playing about him. They've also been playing uh, Armstrong at fullback in New South Wales Cup, and that was the name that Adam O'Brien mentioned in the presser. So mm. whether or not that was a bit of a red herring from from AOB or or a sign of what's to come, I think they've got options there. But, yeah, certainly not you, of the calibre of KP. Would you entertain Gagai taking some reps there? Yeah, that's another good shout as well. If he's fit, um, I wouldn't rule, rule that out either. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now sitting 15th on the ladder at 2-5, and five, um, we've already sort of spoken about O'Brien, but do you think the Knights maybe jump the shark a little bit, signing him to a long-term deal after that run of 10 after wins run, last year? There's been a fair bit of chat on the socials about that over mm. the weekend. The Newcastle Knights going from almost sacking Adam O'Brien to then re-signing him long-term after a couple of big... after Like, it was an impressive run into finals... They beat some pretty poor teams going into last year's final. Are we seeing well. uh, something like an Adam O'Brien, Adam O'Brien being more under pressure? Is he a better coach? You know, when he is under pressure, because now he's signed the. You know, now it's done. Mm. He's probably yep. just more relaxed now. Maybe that that's done and dusted. Um, I would never say that. You know, a coach never drops off. Like that's not it's not what they do. But um, you know, you you sort of anything you do, I suppose, as a coach. I mean, I haven't been a coach for a long time, but you you sort of understand you you're trying to make the right decisions at the time, but. Um, when he's under pressure, you've got it. It's not you kind of do. You have to. Yeah. So now he's probably just you know, you know, given that opportunity, he's like, oh well, we can play with a few things now. We can, we can, you know, now we've got a bit more time. I've got a bit more time. We can play with a few things. So I'm look. I put a line through him. Mm. I know that sounds terrible. Mate, uh, oh, it's easy to do. It's yeah. you know, I, I just think that we put a line through him with no KP till was it twelve weeks? They said nine to twelve. I think yeah. Yeah, like, somewhere like that. Like they're they're. You know, they are there. 
if they win four of those games, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, yeah, out of out of the you know out of the twelve because he is a big part of how they play their footy, um, and the spine is something is, is very hard to uh, to get going when you when you don't have it right. It doesn't get any easier for the Knights this week. They got the Finns who proved last yeah. week that they can get mm. up even with their list of outs. Um, and I also think South Sydney sort of taken a bit of pressure off Newcastle, <laughs> uh, the way they're playing. So can we just uh, continue to not talk yeah. about South, please. <laughs> we can do that right now. Let's uh, let's get into some Raiders chat. Oscar, you were away last week yep. and we did speak about Canberra at length. But yeah. the other big injury news that we do need to get into is Jamal Fogarty. Enormous. Uh, enormous, mm. who is uh, set to miss basically the whole year with a biceps injury. Yep. Um, Last week's blowout to Brisbane aside, it felt like the Raiders were on track for a spot in the eight. Yep. Um, probably somewhere in the bottom half of the eight, but Fogarty's easily been one of their best players on the park yeah. so far this year. Um, it seems like they're not going to trouble some of the top teams, but uh, we've got a very inexperienced spine now at yes. Canberra. Yep. Xavier Savage, Chevy Stewart, uh, KO Weeks probably comes in. There's only mm. like 20 games worth of experience uh, between those three. Yep. What are we feeling about the Raiders and how big of a loss is this for that club? Yeah, well, I, I was, was listening to um, the potty last week um, while I was away talking about um, well, Jarrell, you saying we want to keep talking about the milk yep. and ruin their chances. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Uncle Jinxed Jamal. It <laughs> he was the one player in this 2024 Raiders squad that they couldn't afford to lose yep. going yep. into this season. <clears throat> um, I wrote a big piece about... All those young guys, Weeks, Strange, Stewart, Savage, um, coming into this season mm. and where they might all fit in. I th assumed we would see all of them at some stage this year, which uh, except for Weeks we, ha uh, we have so far. Um, yeah, Fogarty, not only has he been one of their best players, but he's been their most important. Mm. Like The Raiders, I've spoken about this a few times on the pod, they've introduced some repeatable actions to their mm. attack this year. Ethan Strange doing some good things on that left edge. Danny Levi's having a bit of a career revival uh, out of dummy half as well. They've always been that gritty effort-based team who put themselves there, thereabouts to win games. And then it's been these guys like Strange, Savage, mm. Timoko, uh, Rapana and Fogarty who have been actually uh, coming up with those winning plays. I'm really curious to see who gets named in the seven jersey this yeah. week. Yep. Simi Sasagi finished the game there last week because he was the utility option off the bench. You mentioned KO Weeks. He's not a seven any more than Strange is, yeah. any more than Stewart is. Does uh, Do we see Sebastian Chris move into the halves like mm. Ricky used him at different times last year? It's going to be very interesting to see how they balance out their attack now because Fogarty's the guy who was putting all these young superstars into positive areas on the field. Are they going to be able to be as effective, like as impressive as Ethan, for example, has been in his first seven or eight games in first grade, is he going to be able to maintain that without a guy like Jamal putting him in a position? Is it a credit to Jamal as well? I mean, like, we talk about when he was at the Titans, they were actually on a really good trajectory. Yeah. yeah going yeah. places. And then they obviously put their um, – the Titans chose um, – Yep, Tanner and um, who's Balls. at the Bulldogs now? Um, oh, uh, Toby. Toby yep. uh, Sexton um, put faith into them too, mm. and look where the Titans are. Yep. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, we probably don't talk about how important Jamal Fogarty is to sides. He's probably yeah. very underrated. Yeah. Very underrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He obviously does the right things to to make sure teams know where to get to on the field, where how how they need to play other other sides. You cannot. You cannot take away from an old head, right? Like, he's obviously been around for a long time and it is going to be very hard to fulfil those shoes with Jamal Fogarty now um, and the Raiders. Didn't want to put the mocker on him, but look, <laughs> look what's look happened. What's yeah. happened. Yeah. It's a one week you know, talking, one about, week of talking <laughs> about him and they've lost their, you know, their star half and... Yeah, it doesn't get. It's not going to get any easier for them as well. I mean, especially when you travel to the Broncos, they have such a great record in Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, to get put away like they did after Jamal, you know, obviously went off. Um, you know, does it show where the Raiders are, or does it show where the Broncos are? I don't know. Um, bit of both. Bit of both, I think. But yeah, it's going to be a hard. You know, see, you know, year for them if they're if he's not there. As you already said, Gerard, they got the Sharks on Sunday mm. who are absolutely flying right now. Mm. Um, speaking of things that aren't flying, though, our bets in Ned's <laughs> oh, Open Groups. Gosh. When we come back, we'll get stuck <laughs> into the offload. All the betting trends from around the comp. This is the offload.
Funny man, Fogs is away, but that doesn't mean we can't get down and dirty with some betting. It's still tough going in Ned's open groups, as I just <laughs> said, but uh, to pick apart the markets, Oscar, you're back on the offload, mate. Something, Oscar. Yeah, give, Please. Us, give us some green. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Put me in a hole, boys. Ticks. Uh, let's talk top eight, and in particular, three teams that have exceeded expectations so far. Mm. The Sharks, the Finns, and Manly. Yep. Um, you're going to write a piece on the Neds blog that's I coming am. out today or maybe tomorrow um, about what those three teams are doing correctly. Yeah, well, I wrote uh, two weeks ago about a few big clubs outside the eight um, and why... You know, maybe we don't need to be too worried about where they're going to be later in the year. So I thought I'd flip it around this time and have a look at, um, yeah, a few clubs inside the top eight that have maybe surprised a little bit this year. Cronulla, um, I think, off the back of that big win um, in round seven, are worth looking at this week. It's really interesting to compare where they were this time last year. Uh, 159 points scored so far mm. this season. This point last year, 160 points scored. So Jeez, almost wow, identical, identical in terms of what they're doing. Yeah, in and we, didn't we see them just fall apart to going to like towards the back, the end, back of the end, of the end of the year. Yeah, I think not. Not like not throughout the year. They sort of just fell off right uh, at the end. Their defense certainly let them down in, yeah. um, in the back half of last year, and I think it's still. That's going to be the biggest focus. It's an for, incredible start, for Fitzy. Yeah, it was, well, that surprised me. But yeah. you've been busy on your week. Well, off. The, <laughs> the reason I looked into that numbers, uh, that number in particular, was because for me, the Sharks, um, they're just presenting as a much more balanced team in attack this year. They've been particularly with a guy like Nico, who's so good at identifying cues mm, in the yeah. defensive line. So, for example, if a middle forward is uh, makes a legs tackle and he's the third uh, man to peel out of that tackle, he retreats late mm-hmm. down a short side so you've got a big body filling up in a position where he's not supposed to be Nico is the exact kind of half who will see that and quickly adjust and target that guy on the following tackle yep. Yep. so Cronulla play a lot like that and the, the squad is really well designed to do that Will Kennedy's lightning quick out the back they've got powerful outside backs and they've got ball players through the middle who can move the ball to where it needs to go but Nico um, is being really well supported by my boy Braden Trindle this year. Four tries and four assists from Tricky Trindle. Uh, and then Blake Braley doing some nice things around the rock. Nico's touches are around about the same. He averaged 67.1 touches per game last year. This year down to 62.5 per game. So only five touches less per yep. game. But it's what he's doing with those touches that's changed so much. Last year, 1.3 try assists per game on average. This year, 0.8. Okay. So it's almost half the amount of try assists that's, yeah. that Nico's producing. Line break assists, same. 1.6 per game last year, down to 0.7 this year. So on uh, on paper, it looks like Nico's doing less, but it's only it, that's because the teammates around him are, are offering, I guess, more threats yeah, to the yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. He's not having to do as much. And to me, that's the sign of a team that's um, finding ways to balance out their attack a lot more. Mm. I've been really impress- impressed with what they're doing with the ball. I think, as I mentioned, their defense, particularly around Nico, which we'll talk about leading into origin because he's looming as a, mm. as a number six candidate for the Blues. But his defense... Uh, or not his defence, but the spaces around Nico continue to be a target for attacking teams. But, yeah, really impressed with what the Sharks are doing in terms of developing their attack. Mm. When uh, Fogs comes back next week, we will pick our origin teams. Oh, uh, yes. let's I talk. that would happen. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk uh, my Finns. How are you feeling about them? Yeah, well, I harped on about Isaiah Katoa a few weeks ago, the little things that he's doing on the ball um, to compress the defensive line and put Hammer into space. I think I messaged you guys after about 13 bintangs uh, <laughs> from a pub in Bali last uh, <laughs> over the weekend. Isaiah Katoa is him. Yep. Yep. This kid <laughs> is doing things that Nathan Cleary you know, has been doing to earn himself origin jerseys yeah, and yep. all the... Pr- like, Katoa is doing everything right now. Is he um, a Queenslander? No, he's not. <laughs> no, Tonga. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, I think with, with Isaiah in the box seat, um, the Finns are taking the right options in attack, but... You look at their numbers as well. They don't tell us everything, but a typical Wayne Bennett team doesn't miss a lot of tackles, doesn't concede a lot of Mm. penalties, and doesn't make a lot of errors. The Dolphins have conceded the third least penalties uh, of any team in the comp. They miss the third least amount of tackles per game, and they make the least amount of errors per game. So they don't beat themselves. They compete hard, and then Isaiah's taking some nice options on the back of it. And I think they're really, um, you know, enjoying some better depth this year. Mm -hmm. I backed the Eels. 
eel. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> last weekend, because of the outs that the Dolphins had, Hammer was out, Flegler was out, Herbie was out. They bring in guys like Tessie New, Ewan Aitken, Kenny Bromwich, um, Trey, Trey Fuller. Fuller yeah. Had an absolute game of his life. Yep. And his second name in the NRL, I believe. And he, and he did similar things in his first one as well. Yep, exactly. Yep. He was everywhere. Yep. And that right edge for Parramatta. They need to, Probably I don't know, they need to blow it up. all get sacked <laughs> yeah. because they just went down that side yeah. and they could not be stopped. He's a, he's a live wire and it's he, that, that's a great thing that they've got mm. him um, when the hammer's out. Yeah, so yeah, very impressed with the Dolphins. I think um, we were excited about where the, they might finish uh, this time last year. Uh, I think there's it's it's there's more reason to be optimistic about them playing finals or you know flirting with the top eight mm. spot this yep. season, uh, this time around. So yeah. And last but not least, the Manly Seagulls, who were sort of in a similar position to Newcastle this time last year. Yeah. With Turbo going Fair out. comparison. One-man show. Uh, Seagulls are flying now, though. Yeah, I think it's not a one-man show down there anymore at Manly. Turbo's still you know, a very important part of their attack, but they're just so much more balanced now, similar to what I just said about Cronulla. Luke Brooks swinging over to that right edge and putting Jason Saab over in the corner. Like, those kinds of different mm. looks Manly haven't presented um, to the defence for a long time. DCE and Hamole Olakawadu. They did it the hard way on the weekend, though. They, they did. They went, they went the hard way. I they, mean, uh, I wouldn't have been happy if I was a, you know, a, Manly, if, fan. a Manly fan because... I'm, I always thought this might have been a game they fell over yep. with, and they were very close. Yeah, Desi, Desi was Yeah, uh, he, he was up and at him, wasn't yeah. he? And you were keen on the Titans, so. I Yeah, I did. I got on the Titans. Uh, yep. I, I just thought it's a game where he's coming back to his former club, and there would have been a lot of talk about that. Um, I think internally, I know Sieb said there wasn't, mm. but um, there would have been I'd, – I'd say between the players, there would have been something like that talked about. Yeah. So, And Desi, obviously – it wasn't only him. I think there was – Trainers, physio that he took with him too as well. So there was, was a lot. Play, yeah, Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly, uh, yeah. Foreign. So there's look. There, there was a bit of uh, there was a bit of you know interest in that game for them. So yeah, yeah. I think two numbers that stood out to me looking at Manly. They're playing with fifty one point three percent possession on average per game, which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, Penrith over the last three years have dominated the competition, playing with roughly fifty three percent possession per game. So that little three percent margin. You have to remember it doubles because it's 3% less that the opposition has as well. So yeah. they're spending a lot of time on the ball and then their supports, 54 supports per game is the second most in the competition. So they're moving a lot. They're presenting a lot of questions to the, to the defense and with guys like DCE and Turbo taking the right decisions. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what Manly are doing this year. Is Luke Brooks a smoky origin no. uh, number six candidate? I don't I mean, think so. Save that for next week, eh? Yeah. I don't think Spoiler. so. Spoiler. Anyway. <laughs> All right, we have a Anzac Day triple header coming up Ooh, this yeah. Thursday, starting with a blockbuster between the Titans and the Waz. <laughs> uh, the market speaks for itself here. Uh, the why hasn't it been? Why isn't it the Warriors and the Great Storm? Great question. Yeah. Why isn't it Warriors? They've always had history and they've always played. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, that is a fair point. PDL. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're Answer us. <laughs> <laughs> Drop us a comment. Um, <laughs> Titans have held the wood over the wires, surprisingly. They've won three of their last four. Warriors are six and four at the line over the last 12 months, coming off a okay. loss. Um, and the last six games between these two have all gone under the total. So, uh, look, Oscar, you're happy to back the Waz to bounce back from last week. I know you were pretty bullish on them at the start of the year to finish top four. Yeah, I'm still pretty confident. I mean... There's a lot of injury concerns coming out of New Zealand right now. Um, I think we saw what happened to them last week against the Dragons. Again, full credit to St. George um, for producing a really good performance. The Wars just ran out of legs. Mm. They've got a lot of middles missing at the moment. Um, and it appeared that they just ran out of gas. Uh, Sean Johnson's got an Achilles mm. issue that he's managing. So, yeah, my top four bet, maybe not as confident as I was at the start of the year. I think if you want value this weekend, I think it's with the Titans. I'm with the Ooh. line. Well, that's my... I, I going think, back to the well. I honestly think head it is. Head-to-head head or take the, the line? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a head-to-head type of guy. Yeah. That's this the type of guy I am. I've heard that. But <laughs> I will say this. It's a, <laughs> it's a Thursday night game. They get a long turn around the Titans. So yep. they're... You know, it's still a six o'clock game for them over there or something. So their little, you know, dangle in the in the air from Desi will be, hey boys, you get this job done, you can go and enjoy yourself in New Zealand yeah. for the night. Like that, that it's 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 been done before. Like mm -hmm. I've been in teams where it's been done before, where you get the opportunity if you don't win, you don't go out. If you yeah, win, you okay. go out. Yeah, a bit of incentive. It's, it's a bit of incentive, yeah, honestly. Yeah, okay. It's a big one. So maybe take the line. 
Well, with the Titans, I've yeah. taken a, an alternate line in mm, for our multi line, for the yeah. Titans. I think they they are down the bottom of, of the ladder for a reason. Mm. They have been well beaten in Haven't a few got, games yeah. this year, but they have improved every week. They probably should have won, arguably, against Manly last week. I think they were unlucky the weekend before. For feet is playing more minutes. Um, both for more starting on the left edge has been a problem mm. for them defensively. And they look a lot better as soon as he goes to the middle and Fafita comes on that left edge or they're playing mm. uh, Cleese Haas out there. So whether that's something Desi looks at this week, yeah, I think this will be much closer than the market suggests. Mm. Speaking of close games, uh, the traditional Anzac Day game last year between the, the Dragons and the Roosters was a classic. Yep. Uh, Chooks got up 27-26 to 26 that day. Dragons coming off an upset over the Wires last week. Mm. Chooks have lost three of their last four. Wow. Um, Saints on the back of a win over the last 12 months are just one and five, would you believe? Um, and the last three between these two sides have all gone over the total. Yeah. So uh, are we going to get another classic here? I think we are. Yeah. yeah I, look, I'm, when, it, when it's got a bit of uh, feeling about it, about Anzac, I think both players, both teams will be – you know, having X army in all week, um, knowing what this day means to Australians all around the country, um, all three, all three of these games will have a bit of feeling about them. Yeah, Th- this um, one the most, but this though, one I the most. I, yeah, yeah definitely. Agree. This is this is the most traditional one. Yep. What was I've, it special for you as a player playing on this? Yeah, I, 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 it was, but I don't think it's as special to these two clubs. Like this, I think this is the yeah. this is the yeah. biggest game of the weekend, yep. uh, yeah. and you're not going to see any blowouts in this one. Um, like we've said, we've We've seen the Dragons play some great footy last week, um, you know, and the Roosters aren't going that flash hot, but put both of their, you know, put both of that aside, I think it's going to be a great, I think it's going to be a close footy game. I don't know if it'll get, a, there will be a blowout. I think it'll be nice and tight and, um, yeah, the, it'll be, it's going to be a very enjoyable four o'clock game for us up at Queensland too. Mm. Yeah. Frothing at the beer. Tasty. Oh, tasty. it's awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be a grind, yeah. a real scrappy one. I wouldn't be surprised if it finishes like 14, 12 or something mm. like that. Uh, I'm curious to see what Shane Flanagan does with Jack Bird and Zach Lomax when Birdie's back. Well, he's back this week, I've he, heard. Is he good to yeah, go? Yeah, I've heard he's back this week. So and that's, that's does he slot straight back into right centre? I don't know where Zach he goes. Go right but wing? Yeah, I don't know where he goes, but I know that they've, you know, he's, he's good to go. He's good to go and he yeah. wanted to get back for this game. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, good he for might, the Dragons. Maybe he gets reverted back to a bench role. Um, Wouldn't be bad. Wouldn't be bad. I mean, pff, Imagine him coming off the bench. Yeah. You know, and leg speed through the middle. Yep. Yep. And then the week after, he goes back to his normal position. But mm. it's a big game. Like, mm. you can't have not your best players. And Jack Bird is one of those guys. Yep. So he's got to be there. You know, he's got to be somewhere. Yeah. Massive game for those two rivals. Lastly, we have. Well, Oscar, you didn't want to talk about the Rabbitohs, but we have to. <laughs> yeah, uh, Storm versus Rabbits. Mm. Money's back off a of buy. Uh, the Rabbits have won two of the last three between these two sides. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but never won at Amy. Is never that right? Won yeah. at Amy Park. Correct. Uh, never. never, never. Yeah. So Storm by how much? But we have. That's yeah. I'd forgotten about the fact we beat them in Magic Round last year. That was one of the most impressive performances I saw from Souths last season. Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> You'd be a brave or a very loyal Rabbitohs fan to be taking uh, the value head to head on Souths here. Jai Gray um, gets his second shot at fullback, um, but I think the biggest concern for the Rabbitohs is Tavita Totola is out for twelve weeks yeah. with a foot injury, and they've and they've had a week off, haven't they? Yeah, I Souths just, just off the bar. I just think they needed to. Unfortunately, in the situation that they're in, they just needed to probably. Yeah. Not have a buy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? Like I know, I know everyone's been like, "Oh, it's probably good for them to have a break and get all this stuff done." But I just think when you're in the heat of the moment and all this noise is around, just keep playing footy and get better yeah. and better. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Oscar, but Mate, I think don't apologize. I think this is going to be a really bad game for them. Could be a long yep. night. Yeah. Like, the biggest problem for Souths this year has been their middle defence uh, and their, you know, um, I guess their yardage game through yep. the middle. Tavita Tatol has been our only productive forward, really. Mm. Um, so now we're looking at, you know, putting bigger minutes into guys like Shaq Mitchell. Um, Sean Kepi probably comes back into the side. Tom Burgess playing long minutes. That's a lot of big, immobile dudes through the middle uh, against uh, a Harry Grant and Ryan yeah. Pappenhausen and Jerome Hughes attack. Yeah, it yep. could be a long night for, for the Bunnies. Mm. Storm 13 plus is paying a dollar eighty, so that pretty much yeah. tells you all you need to yeah. know yeah. Uh, with that one. It's probably the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Good betting chat as always, boys. Uh, when we come back, we're going to play a game of love it or hate it. Mm-hmm. Fogs' fast five is off this week, so uh, we'll, we'll mix it up.
All right, boys, the great man Foggs is off, as I've said, so there's no Good Fast God. Five this week. Um, Good riddance. Well, yeah. <laughs> got <laughs> us on a beauty a couple of times <laughs> this year. Mate, he sprayed me twice on the potty last week when I wasn't here as well. Yeah, well, he's the best of that. Yeah. He's, a, he's the best of that. Yeah, no he's a coward. Yeah, he's a coward. Uh, fraud. <laughs> Don't come back. Um, we're gonna <laughs> play. Oh, hell, I mean, <laughs> maybe not that much, but... Yeah. <laughs> we're going to play a game of love it or hate it. Uh, plenty of good scenes from Rugby League over the mm. weekend. Mm -hmm. The first was on Saturday night. Uh, Open champion Cam Smith mm. in the sheds after the game with the Broncos, enjoying a few frothies. Not, well, he didn't really want to be a part of it by the looks of it, but uh, <laughs> Paddy Carrigan and the boys dragged him into the huddle, mm. and uh, he's a big Bronx fan, that man. Love it or hate uh, athletes from all the codes being pulled into Post game celebrations. I hated it because I wasn't there. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I hated it. I'm selfish. No, nah, no. Nah, of course we love it. Like any way that we can get a, you know, Cam's a boy from out one team way, Albany Creek way. You know, he that's his that's his home club out there. So to see him back, you know, home, mm. um, you know, obviously got lived down in uh, Adelaide um, very shortly. So yep. yeah, to see him back home, it's always it's always really nice to see people like that. I think if you're a bandwagon, it's a bit of a different story. If you if you've been dragged in like, um, who was it? Uh, School of Rock. What's his name? Jack uh, Black. Jack Black. Yeah. He was just chucking every jersey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I mean, it's great. It's funny, but I'm all for the people who have been following their sides for a long time. Yeah. Cam's one of those guys. He's day dot. Oh, he's, he is a day dot. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to have a beer with him before he became big, big dog Cam mm. Smith. Not... Not that he's changed now. He's, he's just the same, same bloke guy. He ever was, he's yeah. the same guy. Yeah. He just lives in Miami uh, in a house worth fifteen million dollars. So, <laughs> um, no, I think I, I love it. I absolutely love it, mate. They're just fans. Yeah, yeah, they are. Like, imagine if your team won the grand final and you got the opportunity to be in the sheds. Like at the end of the day, like I remember, um, was it Mick Fanning when Sharky's won? Yeah, yeah, Shark. Like, I can yeah. still picture the grin on his face yeah. walking around the field. So, yeah, I mean, if you hate that. Get over it. Yeah, you've, yeah. you've got issues. Yeah. We all love that one. Uh, boys, have you seen much of the Anzac jerseys that are coming out this week? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got seen a couple of them, yes. yes. <laughs> I've got them up on my screen here. I, I know which one I don't like. Give us give us a sample. Which one don't you I like? I think it's – was it the – was it the manly? Was it the manly one? This the, one here? Oh no, it's not the, the manly one. The Rabbitohs one and the Warriors are disgraceful. The Rabbitohs have oh, got like a remember. little blue collar for the. Maybe I got it wrong. Done a navy one. I don't, um, oh, yeah. that's the Rabbitohs. Yeah, look, yeah. It's, yep. it's, um, and that looks like Bulldogs colours almost. Full respect, obviously, yeah. to our. Anzacs, is that for the navy? But is these that for jerseys, navies, are, is it? I'd imagine so. That's no, why. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for the Broncos one. The reason why I like the Broncos, not only because I'm a Brisbane Broncos fan, but it obviously shows respect to here in Queen, is it Queen Street Mall? I think it is, or the, the, uh, the, the Memorial. Yeah, 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 the Memorial. Anzac Square, yep. Anzac Square sorry. Um, so, you know, they've obviously shown respect to what, what it means for, for here in Brisbane. So, um, and I look, to be honest, mm. the Brisbane Broncos haven't really got much wrong in their jerseys in the last five years. So I'll, I'll cop that. What's... Um, yeah, it's a very colourful one. The Warriors, the Warriors one. ones. Yeah, are the Warriors one's very interesting. I'm not here. There's a lot going on there. Uh, I think the Dolphins one's very nice. Dolphin one's That's cool. probably the best jersey they've subtle, ever actually made. Yeah, subtle as well. Um, Cowboys. Yeah. Cowboys is they like always, a yellow and green. Yeah, they always do very eccentric ones. Though. Yeah. So it's not anything, you know, if you've gone from having a pretty content one yep. to a crazy one, then you've probably got some serious issues. I liked the one South did last year, the the the, the, the no colour one. It was like the oh, grey, yes, black yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Right? That one looked mean. All for a great cause, obviously, yep, uh, for 100%. Anzac Day. But um, some of them, are I mean, who if you're on that some questionable decision, <laughs> yeah. I would love to be on the board. You know, I'd love to be on those design teams. It'd be great to be able to be a part of those because yep. you want it. You got to be able to sell it as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's yeah. not only you know, it, you, and it's they're not cheap. Or, no, they're not. <laughs> what about that? Do look, one hundred and seventy dollars yeah, for a jersey now. Yeah. When did that happen, mate? When did this happen? Because I'm, because obviously I've n I haven't bought a jersey in a long time. I've never needed I to. I just get handed jerseys. Well, no, I'm yeah. <laughs> without sounding rude, but I went to go, I went to go and have a look at the diamond ones when I was at the. I was like 170 dollars. I went in there and the first person I seen was Walsh and I sprayed him. He's like, no, what's a drive by? What's going on? I said, you should put in the jersey. He's like, mate, I'm not. I'm just a fullback. I'm like, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Just copping heat. Do you buy beers in Brisbane? No, mate. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've been to the <laughs> Caxon Street with you, Jarrell. Yeah. No, yeah, you look, know. Look, I, I've tried to stay so one of 
Brisbane's favourite son for a long time, and I'm going to hold on to it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, lastly, Oscar, you sat this one through the group chat on Saturday oh, night. No, what I, I think you know what it is. <laughs> oh, does he though? <laughs> Probably maybe he doesn't. Uh, Morgan Smithy's showing up to Suncorp in his TS. Yes, oh, yeah. Love it. Let's go. You love it. Yeah, love it. Love well, it. there's Nikes now that have got t- uh, t- um, Tempo. Uh, what are they called? The Tempo. Tien- yeah. Oh, the Tien. Yeah. Yeah. Tien. Yeah. Yeah. So Walshy, I think Reese Walsh wore them last week yes. or the week before. Yeah. He wore the Eshays. Yeah. Did you do it without the socks? Uh, no. Because that's, that's what really makes it. No. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what would make it if it was someone else's boots? <laughs> he gets skin-coloured socks. He could wear skin-coloured socks. I oh, know. They're doing everything these days, these kids. Uh, Even up. what about Reese Walsh? Um, I mean, while we're on the topic with him, he's um he's trying to go viral. Now, did you see um, What's he done? um Sketch, the new the guy on the uh, on YouTube? Um, he says, what's up, brother? And he's, he's doing all the stuff that... Um, all the kids are doing on TikTok now. Uh, so yeah, okay. it's just getting. Yep. He's he's man. He's going to be. He's ahead of the curve. That boy. He's yeah. ahead of the curve. So all these celebrations are becoming viral. So yeah, mate. He's um. Uh, he's yeah. marketable. I'm going back to X's and O's here because I'm having withdrawals. Haven't <laughs> talked enough about footy yeah. in the last two weeks. But what the some of the things Reese is oh, doing yeah. at the moment. I mean. That try he scored on the weekend was unreal. Mate, he the, – the move – go back and watch that try. Um, Timoko comes flying out of the line. And he doesn't really – he, he just – yeah. He move, Reese is moving off the ball. Like, in the time that it takes for the ball to leave, I think it was Ezra or Jock. I can't remember who Jock's hands. Pass, yep. Jock's hands. Yep. In the time it took for the par- ball to leave Jock's hands He's, and get into Reese's, Reese has looked up, seen Timoko, moved – before, like as the ball's coming through him, and, and then caught, caught it, it mm. swerving. Like and Timiko just was like, yeah, he had did nothing. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. well, and even shit. the left foot on um, uh, Chevy Shure oh, chip, yeah. was was classy. Like, mm. like he, he made it look like he was gonna, you know, run straight down the sideline. And that's the honestly one of the hardest things you can do when you're trying to play one on one is always having that deceptive, you know, trying to trying well, to beat someone on which way you're gonna go. We did that a lot of training, yep. and. His his left foot is unbelievable. He is he's done it to, to best in the game to to uh, Cleary in yep. the grand final. Yep. You know, I think they would learn similar very shape. similar shape. They, yes. I can't believe they haven't learned. So um, yeah. the best thing to try you can't you can't let him go because he's just going to go around you as well. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's crazy. His man. timing uh, and his positioning at the back of those block shapes yeah. is the best. I've seen since, like, it reminds me of Billy Slater. Yeah, um, he's twenty one years old. Yep, mm. um, I think. So unfortunate for Kalen Ponga with the injury, but uh, I mean, I heard you boys talking last week, yeah. and you all said it immediately. Reese is the fullback for Queensland for the next ten. Like it's yeah. his jersey. Well, we didn't even lose. have to say it. Billy Slater said it for us. Did he say come he, out and he, say it he, as well? He said he goes if he wants it, he, yeah. it's his jersey for the next you know ten years. Yeah, because the the group chats are already going off, as I'm sure the listeners are as well about you know who was going to be there before KP was injured, like. Reese is a guy who can do things that no one else can, and I think Billy will build that team around. You know, we're going to defend the errors that Reese makes because yeah. he will make an error, um, and then he'll also set you up two tries. And I know this is the love it or hate it segment, but we we loving Reese Walsh. Oh, we right? loving it. Oh, we're who, lo- who is we're, loving? We're loving it. And yeah. you know what? The, the start of Billy Slater's career as well, when he was just a youngster, mm. there's all these people talking about errors that he he makes. Um, Reese Walsh, mm. Billy Slater made because I, yes. I went back and had a look. He was making a lot of errors when he first came into the game. Yeah. Wait till he hits his straps. We're in. You know, we're in, for a, we're, we're in for a very beautiful rugby league story to yep. watch Reese Walsh go. I love him. Billy couldn't pass like But this get those jersey prices down, Walshy, when you get a chance. <laughs> uh, boys, uh, excellent edition of Love It or Hate It. We're going to come back with something that the punters hate, and that's our multi. Surely they get one up this week. It's the NRL Podcast Multi. Boys, the multi's been rough so far this year. There's no way around it. Mm. Um, There's plenty of time left. There what, is. Are we, what are we, 27 rounds? We're only seven rounds in? Yeah. yeah. No, Optimism, no, glass half full, all yeah. that sort of That's shit. That's what we've got to be like. Yeah. We have it's to fine. be like that. Uh, last week, Gerald, you took Jesse Arthurs any time. Yeah. He's a real try scorer, isn't he? <laughs> oh, my God. Few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky. Unlucky us. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can I can tip my own you know, bets in, but I can't get this multi. None of us can. We can't put this multi yeah, together. Yeah, we're, we're battling really yeah. hard. That's all um, right. We're like Reese Walsh. These are some early errors. Yeah. We're going to come out in the second half and we're going to brain them. Did we even get one? We got one last year. Yeah. I think it was actually yeah, one. Yeah. If we can, if <laughs> we can double one. our if we can double our tally from last year, then yeah. we're up. Yeah. yeah. So let's just it's go. It's a low bar. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oscar, your two favourite words over the last three days have been <laughs> eel. <laughs> yeah, look. 
<laughs> Shout out to I don't know if anyone follows Phil Gould on Twitter, but he likes to refer to teams in singular uh, <laughs> singular noun form. So yeah. Eel from last week let me down big time, but up Titan this yeah. week. <laughs> uh, I've taken the Gold Coast alternate line plus 13 and a half yeah. points. Yep. I think the line this morning as of Tuesday was 11 and a half. Um, I like the the extra two points there with with a double converted try margin. But yeah, we spoke about Titans. I think they're they're building towards something, mm-hmm. and the Waz are running out of troops um, through the middle. So yeah, I think this will be closer than the market suggests. Uh, f- fog for me because... <laughs> Last week, he backed the Broncos, and he had his mustache on the on line. The line. <laughs> and, uh, he the, knew that we weren't going to lose. Yeah. yeah. so He was a confident man, wasn't he? He was, and he was up and about in the group chat. So his, uh, his beautiful Mo is safe for at least a week. Um, he got his tip up, and I tipped the Sharks to cover versus the Cows. So well seen, mate. Well seen. The, uh, the record as it stands, Oscar, you fall on the four and four. Mm-hmm. JYY, you're three and five. Oh, that's ugly. I've improved to six and two, mm. and Foggs is the reverse two and six. Mm. Um, so Foggs is off this week, but he's chimed in. He's, he's sticking fat with the Bronx. He's taking the alternate line, minus seven and a half, uh, against the Tigers on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, JYY, who have you got? <laughs> Just shared a look. Uh, yeah. I've gone, um, what did I go? The Dragons? Yeah, I've gone the Dragons <coughs> um, plus five and a half. Yep. Um, yeah, we've already spoke about it earlier in the potty. I yep. just think it's going to be a very close game. Um, so it's going to be a tight one. So I was going to take them head to head, punters, but... I shit myself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I came back to And Earth. we need a win. And we need a win. Yeah. So that's my bet. Uh, Oscar, you've already said you're taking the Titans yep. plus 13 and a half. I've gone Newcastle plus six and a half. Backs against the wall. I think they're going to prove they're not Very a one man show. Um, I just like that line there. Um, well, you're going well and betting at the moment, yeah, so you, yeah. you just stick to your guns, mate. Fins are still very undermanned. So to recap that, uh, we've got the Broncos minus seven and a half against the Tigers, the alternate line. Dragons line against the Chooks, the Knights plus six and a half against the Finns, and the Titans alternate line plus 13 and a half against the Waz. Lots of lines this week. Yeah, lots of lines. Lots of lines last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, $9.06 for that one. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's actually not bad. Pella. I'm going to get on it, punters. Well, I'm you, on it. Well, you're in my... You're in my s- I'm on it. Yeah, <laughs> seems, get, just do it. Uh, this, this pays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can find that multi in the special section of the Ned's NRL section on the app. Um, we're going to wrap up now, boys. What are we looking forward to this weekend? Um, I'm looking forward to having uh, Adam Reynolds back in Payne Yes. House. Yes. They both... Both yeah, matters. I've got a little whisper because uh, obviously the teams won't be out right now. Um, but yeah, I've I've heard from really good sources that both of them will be back this week. So that's going to make them even shorter against the mm. the, uh, the Tigers. But yeah, they've um, they've done everything they they can do properly, and oh, it's going to be it's going to be good. I mean, Jock's done a great job, and so have the boys that are filled in. Mm. But they are two integral parts of the Brisbane Broncos. So looking forward to them two uh, coming back. It's kind of flown under the radar. Like Reno has been spoken about because he's been in and out, you know, here and there. Yeah. since moving to Brisbane, but. Payne's been out for what? Five or six weeks now? Yeah. Four four to be exact. Four, yeah. four, four weeks. Yep. Like when when we're talking about the Bronx, like they were outside the eight two weeks ago when I wrote that piece. Like the little things that they're doing right, the competing, guys like Ezra and Cobbo and Patty stepping up when those mm. boys have been out, I've mentioned. And then Kevy making good decisions. Like everyone wanted Tristan Saylor to go in there and instead it was Jock Madden and because he can play a similar role to Renault. Yep. Um, yeah, I like it. Bronx are looking good. Yeah, they are looking good. And I just they're, – they're going to be so big. I mean, having pain backs is going to be damaging, Enormous. unfortunately, for the Tigers. Yep. But it's it's great for I – mean, he might even come off the bench, you know. Like, imagine him coming <laughs> off the bench. Unfortunate for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to – I want to give a shout-out to my rugby league club. The Bear U- me to it. The yeah. UQ Hounds uh, kicking off the 2024 University's Rugby League Queensland competition – on Anzac Day down at UQ there. One of my best friends uh, and and brother for life, Jesse Domic, is making his coaching debut. Um, son of uh, NRL yep. and Super League player Sid Domic. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to the UQ Hounds. I've retired mm. and I've got no itches to go back and play. Yeah. <laughs> but I also did register just in case Jesse does. <laughs> <wins, so. laughs> he yeah, is available. Up the Hounds. <laughs> uh, boys, we've got to name the episode here before well, we go. I don't know. Uh, what about my ring, baby? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oscar gets hitched. Yep. Yeah. Hitched up. 
tied up, up. Yeah. Knotted up. Yeah. Ringed up. Tied up. That could tied, tied up. Tied up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tied up right now. I love being tied easy, up. Easy. Easy done. All right, boys. Uh, thank you as always. Fogs is back next week. Listeners, we will be back to recap Anzac rounds. Uh, talk to you then. Thanks for listening to Ned's NRL Unpopular Opinions. Enjoyed the podcast? Remember to like, subscribe and rate the show wherever you get your podcasts. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.